when I was first asked to to do some work for National Geographic, I thought, I, I, you know, are you sure you have the right guy? You know, uh, which I think speaks uh, also well about the uh, vision that National Geographic has charted. Just a quick little background on some of the work that I've been doing since 1991. I had been looking at camera obscura illustrations for a number of years, and essentially the idea is a small box or big room with a small opening in a dark room allows an image to actually enter the room. So knowing that this actually could be created, I, I thought that maybe an idea would be to photograph the, the effect itself. Turn, turn my living room into a camera obscura, cover all the windows, put a little hole in there, and let an image come in, sort of like this uh, light bulb picture. This is the most simple idea of photography. A small opening like a lens allows a light bulb to come inside a box. It's not, you know, you don't have to have the latest camera to, to uh, love the basis of, of photography. So with that in mind, I made my first camera obscure in 1991. This image actually came inside the room. It just took me a while to figure out how to expose this, and it turned out that it was an eight-hour exposure. It's dim, and film is slow, but I was so encouraged that I thought, wow, I'm like inventive photography or something, you know? Uh, I really felt like Daguerre and Talbot and uh, why not? So here are some early ones that I've made in the 80s and 90s. And mind you, this is just a hole <laughs> letting this in. A more recent ones are now in color, but uh, take place over time. A nice little apartment overlooking Central Park West. Central Park allowed me to make a spring image a summer, a fall, and a winter. I really liked Monet a lot, and it felt like it was that kind of meditation on a place and changes in the seasons. A more recent one, which leads me to the work that I've done for National Geographic. I was in West Texas um, a number of years ago, and I really wanted to make a picture there. But of course, there are no rooms in the desert uh, so I, I thought that maybe if I work on the idea of a tent or a portable room with a, well, I'll show you, sort of like this ancient idea of photography where a box can give you a kind of a, an image, 90 degree angle. Then I thought about these early devices that artists used in photography. In, not, not photography, this is pre-photography. A tent with some kind of periscope on it allowing an image of the world to actually come down onto the, the sketch pad. What a neat idea to, to trace the world. Um, and this is, again, before photography. So thinking about these devices made me think that, A, I should get my own device. This is a large tripod holding a periscope with a lens. So an image like that comes this way and then through a mirror gets projected down there. At least that was what I wanted it <laughs> to do. And then somewhere, I would have a camera photographing that event. This is uh, reminding me of this wonderful Steinberg uh, <laughs> drawing, where, and the idea of the ground being deep, not just in terms of light and sand and all, but doubt and, you know, duty and uh, Thinking about the ground having all kinds of meaning and milking something out of the ground really made me excited. This is uh, in Texas, our first experiment. There were a number of us setting up this infernal machine um, to try to get a picture. And so we really didn't know exactly what was going to happen. But eventually, the tent was set up uh, looking at a scene not real dramatic, but interesting. Uh, we're looking that way. Anyway, the picture that came out was this sandwich, natural sandwich of an image in the nearby landscape actually projecting on the ground itself. And that felt like, hmm, 
that's a very natural way of being freaky. Uh, <laughs> in other words, what Photoshop can do, like my daughter can do in Photoshop in two seconds, I have to go to the desert and do it. I like the idea of truth in photography. So this is a number of other pictures that I've made with that device. This is in Maine, dead grass. It's almost a painterly effect. And the Grand Tetons on a sidewalk. I grew up in Cuba, so all I knew about the U.S. was mostly westerns, you know, cowboy movies. Uh, so my impression of the West was like, wow, you know, it's this grand thing. And indeed, it is grand. So visiting these places made me realize why great painters made paintings of these remarkable landscapes. So I went there, too. The Golden Gate Bridge celebrating its anniversary. I'm now using a digital camera, which means that it's a shorter exposure. It's not hours, it's minutes. So clouds can come in, which feels very nice. It feels like a moment in life rather than a generic six hours. We put the tent on the edge of the canyon, and it was windy, too, so it was really weird to feel like you're making a picture. And all these tourists were like coming by and saying, oh, you can camp here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, I, sometimes we lie, say, yeah, of course. <laughs> Just ask the, uh, the guy. <laughs> but the, the idea of the structure, the rock structure beneath me having a conversation with the larger structure out there, having this meeting ground between the, to me it feels like what I got into photography in the first place, to make some kind of larger union take place. This is Yosemite Valley, Thomas Hill painting. And one of the America's best artists, Carlton Watkins, who made the best Yosemite pictures, I think, ever. And this is my version of it, on a sidewalk. That's the, the road. William Henry Jackson, another great American photographer, may have been, I think he was the first photographer to actually see Old Faithful. So he made this picture in, in the 1860s, 70s. And it must have been amazing. And of course, Congress eventually got to see th these pictures. And they said, oh, this is a no-brainer. We've got to protect this. Um, so I decided to go to that same place. And to me, I think the reason why I'm doing this kind of work, like I do all kinds of other work, is to maybe revisit what's been worn out in our brains, what's become so cliche that we don't even see anymore, to kind of give Maybe all faithful, uh, a second look. Thank you very much.